Hi everyone, my name is Lian Singh. My metric number is 287223 and this is my partner. Hi everyone, my name is Wong Jia My metric number is 287151. Lian Singh, do you know what are we going to do for today? Yeah, of course, we are going to conduct a pair presentation which introduces the Malaysian traditional food that consists of Malay, Chinese and Indian cushion. So, this title has related to the theme of food. Oh, I see. So, yes, in the first cousin that we are going to introduce you is Malay cousin, right? So, can you give a brief introduction to Malay cousin? Yes, and sure, Jia e, Malay cushion is a traditional food of the ethnic Malay of the Southeast Asia, and they eat delicately with the fingers of the right hand and never be the left, which is used for personal ablution. Ah, oh, okay. So, yes, in, what are some of the Malay cousin that you know the most? Can you share some with us? Sure, no problem. The first Malay cushion that I know the most is nasi lemak. Nasi lemak is a dish originating in Malay cushion that consists of fragrant rice that cooked in coconut milk and also pandan leaf. It is commonly found in Malaysia where it is considered the national dish. It is also the native dish in neighboring areas such as Singapore, Brunei and also Southern Thailand. In Indonesia, it can be found in several parts of Sumatra. And do you know, nasi lemak is also considered as an essential dish for a typical Malay style breakfast as well. Besides nasi lemak, I would also like to introduce some Malay desserts such as kuih ketayap and kuih seri muka that I like the most. Kuih ketayap is a popular traditional kuih in Malaysia, Singapore and also Brunei. In Indonesia, it is called dada gulung and is often described as an Indonesia coconut pancake. It's commonly found in Sri Lanka, Brunei, Malaysia, and Singapore. In the Malay language, dada means pancake, while gulung means to roll. The pancake usually has a green color, which acquired by daun suji and also pandan leaf. It is a green folded pancake made up of rice flour, filled with grated coconut and palm sugar as you can see in the video. Okay, now let us move to the second Malay dessert, which is kuih seri muka. Kuih seri muka is a two-layered dessert with steamed glutinous rice forming the bottom half and a green color layer made with pandan juice. Coconut milk is the key in making this kuih. It is used to impact a creamy taste when cooking the glutinous rice and making the custard layer. This kuih can also be found in Indonesia, Malaysia and also Singapore. Those are some of the Malay cushion that I know and I like the most. It is all very delicious and I do enjoy eating it so, so much. So if you haven't tried it before, you should definitely try it out. Whoa, I feel so hungry after listening to you, Yan Sing. I start to fall in love with all the food, especially kui ketaya and kui seri muka as I love the pandan fera so much. So I think I will try it out of after this. Yes, Jia, you should. Hmm, besides nasi lemak, kui ketayap, and also kui seri muka, I wish to hear more about Malay cushion. So, can you share some of the Malay cushion that you personally know and you like the most? Sure, Yansin, why not? Let me share some of the Malay cushion with you. First is laksa. Laksa is a spicy noodle soup that consists of thin white noodle or rice with miscellany with chicken, prawn, or fish served in spicy soup based on other rice and spicy curry, coconut milk, or sweet awesome. Moreover, I would also like to introduce a very special dish to you which is nasi kerabu. Nasi kerabu is a Malay rice dish that originated from Stech Kelantan. It is a popular blue color rice meal eating with dry fish or fried chicken, crackers, or local piglets. Sai Kui Chari is also one of the famous Malay customers. Kui Chari is a traditional Malaysian cake that is very popular with the public. Kui Chari Mani is a part of the sweet state of the cake. It said it's also very tasty, serious and soft on the touch so that the child also really like this cake. Kui Chari is made of the wet flour mixed with water and pandan leaf. These are some of the Malay customers that I like the most and I do believe that you have tried it all before, right? Yes, Jaer, I have tried laksa and also nasi kerabu before. It is all very tasty. But for kuih chara, I don't even tried it before. So I think after this, I will give it a try. As you made me feel very excited after listening to your sharing just now. Glad to hear that you, Yan Sing. So after knowing so many Malay cousins, shall we move to Chinese cousins now? Sure, sure. Let's talk about Chinese cushion now. But before we start, I would like to know about your thought for Chinese cushion. What do you think Chinese cushion is all about? 
for me, Chinese cuisine is an important part of Chinese culture and is cuisine originated from China. Chinese cuisine has influenced many other cuisine in Asia and beyond. With modification made together and local plated, Chinese food staples such as rice, soy sauce, noodle, tea, chili oil, and tofu, and utensils such as chopsticks and the works. Oh, I see. So, without further ado, let me share some of the Chinese cuisine that I personally know well. Firstly, is popiah. I'm sure you heard about it before, right? So let me tell you more about it. Popiah is a Hokkien or Teochew style crepe stuff and roll up with cooked shredded tofu and vegetables such as carrot and turnip. Popiah can also be deep fried and served in a manner similar to the mainstream Chinese spring roll. A popiah skin is a soft crepe paper or pancake made from wet flour. It is eaten optionally with soy sauce or hot chili sauce before it is filled. The filling is mainly steamed or stir-fried turnip which has been cooked with a combination of other ingredients such as bean sprout, French beans and lettuce leaf along with grated carrots, slices of Chinese sausage, thinly slices of fried tofu, chopped peanuts and also peanut powder and shredded omelette. There are two common ways of eating popia, which is by holding them or cutting them into slices and picking them out by chopstick. Besides, I would also like to introduce you to one of the very famous Chinese cushion, which is cha kui tiao. Cha kui tiao is a stir-fried rice noodle in Maritime Southeast Asia. In Hokkien, cha means stir-fried, while kui tiao refers to flat rice noodles. It needs to be stir-fried over very high heat with garlic, light and dark soy sauce, chili face, prawn, shell blood cockles, slices of Chinese sausage, and also bean sprout. Other common ingredients including fish cake and also belacan. Cha Kui Tiao has achieved wider spread popularity within the region from the late 20th century, particularly in Singapore and Malaysia. And do you know, in Penang, Cha Kui Tiao is commonly served on a piece of banana leaf on a plate which intended to enhance the aroma of the dish. Not only that, but I would also like to share one of the Chinese desserts that I personally love to eat, which is Fa Kao. In the word Fa Kao, Fa means expand or prosperity, while Kao means cake. Fa Kao is a Chinese steamed cupcake, and it is often characterized by a split top when cooked. It is often referred to as Chinese smiling steamed cake or blooming flowers. It is commonly consumed in the Chinese New Year and besides, it is also eaten at other festivals such as funerals and weddings for the Hakka people. The cake is made out of rice flour, sweetening, leavening and also sugar. It is steamed on high heat until the top split into four sections and sometimes three sections. Fa Kao used to encourage prosperity in the New Year and they are often dyed bright colors. The most common colors traditionally is white and also pink, but they can also be turned brown by adding palm sugar. Wow, it's all so delicious. Now let me introduce and share some of the Chinese cousin of with you. First is Chi Chong Fen. It is a square rice shake made from a viscous mix of rice flour and water. The liquid is poured onto a special mix flour pan in which it is steaming to produce the square rice shake. The steaming rice shake are rolling or frozen for easier in service. This is usually served with tofu suffer with thick paste. Besides, let me share two Chinese dishes that I tried before, which are bubu cha cha and tofu fa. Bubu cha cha is a nyonya dishes of banana, sweet potato, taro, black eye beans, and sanko pears cooked in pantan flavored coconut milk may be served in hot or cold. In Malaysia and Singapore, bubu cha cha is usually served as a dishes or sometimes for supper. It is one of the most popular Nyonya dishes which is colorful yet delicious. The second dishes is Tau Fu Fa. Tau Fu Fa is a well type building of very soft sinking tofu, traditional flavor with brown sugar shrimp. Various of Tau Fu Fa can be boiled together into three good, savory, spicy and sweet. You know what, Jia'er, there is only one word to describe how I feel for all the Chinese cushion that you have introduced and shared just now, which is yummy. I love it so, so much. And so, after sharing and listening to the Chinese cushion, shall we move to the Indian cushion right now?
Yes, Yan Sing, of course, Leffel has a look on India currencies now. But before we start with the sharing, I would like to know your thoughts on India currencies. Can you share your thoughts about it? Yeah, of course. As I know, Indian cushion consists of variety of regional and traditional cushion native to the Indian subcontinent. Since there are variety in climate, culture, ethnic group, and also occupation, this cushion vary substantially and use locally available spices, herbs, vegetables, and also fruits. I see and saying so. Now I will start sharing some of the Indian cushions. First is Lotte Chanai. Lotte Chanai is a ultimate and simplicity and taste. It's a basically kind of pancake made by combination with flour, oil, yeast, or butter, rolling up into a ball and then strain into the air until it takes a flat, oval shape. It is then fried on a hot iron pan and served with hot chicken and fish curry. Besides, the second Indian cuisine that I would like to share is Muruku. Muruku is a silver snake. Made with a mix of rice flour, hard flour, and seasoning, the dance is then pushed through the mud in circular motion and deep fried in oil, leaving a crunchy, serene and result of sparkling goodness. Not only that, there is one Indian dessert that I would love to share, which is adurasan. Adurasan is a traditional South Indian dish made by deep frying the rice flour and juggling mix dance after flat rolling it into a round shape. Adurasan baking is one of the typical sweet recipe among South India dishes. The consistency of the juggling, making of rice flour, resting the dance for days, making it into bowl, flat rolling it, and deep frying not only it in lengths. It needs focus all to win, making the sweet a difficult one. This is all for me about the India cases. How about you, Yasin? Do you have any other India cases that you would like to add and share? Yeah, sure, Jaya. There is another three Indian cuisine that I would like to share, which is chapati, masala dosa, and also putu mayam. I will begin with chapati. A chapati is a form of roti or rota, which means bread. It is one of the most common form of wheat bread, which is a staple food in the Indian subcontinent. The word chapati means slab or flat, which describe the traditional method of forming rounds of thin dough, slapping the dough between the wetter palms of the hand. Chapati was also introduced to other parts of the world by the immigrants from the Indian subcontinent. Besides, it will be masala dosa. Masala dosa is a popular food in South India. It is made from rice, lentils, potatoes, fenugreek, ghee, and curry leaf, and it is also served with chutney and sambar. The dosa is made in the usual way by shocking rice and lentils overnight in water and the greening into a butter. The butter will be fermented overnight to make the dosa soft in the inside and crispy texture outside. The stuffing is made from boiled potatoes with a seasoning of mustard seeds and garnishing of grated coconut, a pinch of turmeric powder, and also lemon juice. Other than that, I will also introduce my every time favorite, which is putu mayam. Putu mayam, also known as idi yapam, is a rice noodle dish originating from the Indian state, which is Kerala and also Tamil Nadu. It consists of rice flour pressed into noodles, woven into a flat circle, and steamed. The dish also spread to the Southeast Asia, but it is called putu mayam in Singapore and also Malaysia. It is also a common breakfast item in Malaysia and Singapore, where it is typically served with brown sugar and also coconut. Oh, it sounds tasty, and I'm going to try all of it soon. You should definitely try it out, Jae Eun. I'm sure you will like it. So after we have shared and introduced all the Malaysian traditional food from Malay cuisine to Chinese cuisine and then to Indian cuisine, what do you feel? For me personally, I feel that I gain a lot of knowledge as I got to know a lot of Malaysian traditional food that I didn't know well before, and I think it is good that I'm able to share knowledge and at the same time gain my own knowledge. So I think it's quite meaningful. What do you think, Jae? Yes, Yan Sing, I agree with you. And I really enjoy each other sharing just now. Yeah, so I think that's all from us, and I would like to end up by saying thank you and have a nice day ahead. Bye.